I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Make Science Room video series. In this segment, we'll test paint for the toxic heavy metal lead. If you have a home lab, you can make up the test reagents yourself. You'll find complete instructions in lab session 19.8 in the Make Science Room. If you prefer a kit, you can buy the Detection of Lead Paint Test Kit from Makershed. We'll use that kit in this video. Before we can do any tests, we need to make up two solutions, the sodium sulfide reagent and the acetic acid reagent. I've already made up the uh, sodium sulfide reagent. All you need to do is to open one of the small packets of sodium sulfide, put uh, 5 milliliters, which is one teaspoon of water, in a small container. I'm using 35 millimeter film cans, and add the contents of one packet, swirl, and cap it. As far as the acetic acid reagent, we have concentrated 100% acetic acid. I've already added 9 milliliters of water to my acetic acid container. We need to dilute the acid 1 to 10. So I'm going to use one of the pipettes to carefully draw up 1 milliliter, that is the top line below the bulb on the graduated pipette. Transfer it into the acetic acid can. And then I'm going to draw up and expel the solution to mix it a little bit. And there we have our acetic acid solution. In order to get an idea of how our sulfide reagent reacts with different concentrations of lead, we're going to do what's called a serial dilution. The kit contains a bottle of 50,000 parts per million lead solution, and we're going to dilute that by factors of 10 to give us 5,000 550 and 5 part per million solutions. So let's start. I've already placed nine drops of plain water in each of these four front wells of the reaction plate. Now I'm going to withdraw just a small amount of the standard 50,000 parts per million lead and I'm going to add one drop to the first well. Now I'm going to draw that up and expel it swirl it around a little bit and get it mixed. Okay, so the first well is 5,000 parts per million lead. Now I'm going to withdraw one drop, put it in the second well, return the rest of it to the first well, and again stir it around, draw it up, and there we have our 500 parts per million lead solution. And I'm going to transfer one drop of that to the third well and mix it up. That gives us our 50 parts per million lead solution. Transfer one drop to the fourth well and that gives us our 5 parts per million lead solution. We'll test these in a moment to see how they react with the sodium sulfide reagent. Before we start testing actual paint and household products, we want to see how the sodium sulfide reagent reacts with the different concentrations of lead. So I'm going to add one drop of the 5 part per million solution to the bottom spot, and one drop of the 50 part per million solution, one drop of the 500 part per million solution, and one drop of the 5,000 parts per million solution. <clears throat> now, I'll withdraw just a little bit of the concentrated 50,000 parts per million reagent and add that here. It doesn't really matter. You can allow the spots to dry if you wish, or you can test them while you're wet. It doesn't affect the sensitivity of the reagent. So, let's go ahead and see how the sodium sulfide reagent reacts with each of those spots. We'll add one drop of the sulfide reagent to the most concentrated spot. And as you can see, you get an immediate black reaction showing a high concentration of lead. Let's add a drop. Okay, we get a dark brown color here. But again, it's, it reacts immediately, which shows a pretty high concentration of lead. At the 500 part per million concentration, we get an immediate uh, brown, not quite as brown, tannish spot on the 50 part per million solution. Well, I don't know if it's visible in the video, but we get an immediate very light tan reaction, which will probably develop with time. And, of course, we don't expect to get any reaction here with the 5 part per million solution. 
And we don't, or at least not an immediate reaction. If we allowed these to sit and continue to react after a period of several minutes, uh, the colors will deepen and the 50, as a matter of fact, the 50 part per million, the fourth spot down is probably visible on the video now is showing a tan color. And eventually the five part per million may show a color. Now that we've tested the sensitivity of our sulfide reagent with different concentrations of lead, uh, it's time to do some actual paint testing. Unfortunately, I had to cheat here. As it turns out, uh, although our house was built in 1968, none of the paint samples I got showed any presence of lead whatsoever. So I went out and peeled up a small chip of paint from a parking lot line because the ban on lead in paints applies only to residential paints, not to industrial or commercial paints, and lead is still pretty widely used in those types of paint. So I peeled up a chip and I've soaked it in some extraction reagent here in a third film can. And let's draw up and put down a drop. There we go. And see how it reacts to our sulfide reagent. Holy cow, that has some serious lead in it. Based on the sodium sulfide tests, we suspect that this paint sample may contain lead, but we don't know for sure because the sodium sulfide reagent can react with other materials to form a very similar brown stain. So what we're going to do now is a couple of confirmatory tests, and we'll place some of our paint extract in each of two wells of the reaction plate. And we'll now add one drop of iodide test reagent, or two drops. If lead is actually present, we should get an immediate yellow precipitate. And that's exactly what happens. So at this point, we're uh, maybe not 100% sure that lead is present, but we're about 99% sure. So we're going to try another test reagent, the chromate test reagent. And again, we should get a yellowish precipitate immediately. And we do. A very strong precipitate. I don't know if you can see in yellow, but it's clumping on the bottom in little granules. So at this point, we are essentially 100% sure that lead was present in that sample and in very significant amounts. At this point, you should have a pretty good idea of how to test paint for lead. One caveat, treat any results you get as tentative. If you do get positive results, contact your local extension agent or public health department for advice and more information.